the greatest, always was, always will be. That's one of the thousands of tributes to Radio 1's John Peel, who died last night. He was 65 and had a heart attack on holiday in Peru. His wife, Sheila, was with him. John had been here at Radio 1 right from the start in 1967. So many bands owe their career to him. And over the next 15 minutes, we'll be looking back at his life with the people who knew him best. Friends, colleagues and the bands. But first, let's hear from Andy Parfit. He's the controller here at Radio 1. I spoke to him earlier and he gave me more details about what happened. It's very hard to get John to take any sort of holiday away from the station, but he had gone on holiday and he'd gone somewhere that he'd always wanted to go with Sheila. He died of a massive heart attack in the hotel. No one could do anything for him. He'd suffered diabetes for many years as well, hadn't he? He had. I mean, he hit it so well. The last time I saw John, we had one of our DJ dinners and there he was with a glass of red wine in one hand, banging away about the state of music music in, in the world today, putting the world to rights, and John at the centre of it being funny, cracking jokes, <laughs> telling, <laughs> telling us about a band that he'd had up at Maida Vale last week where all the mates of the band decided to come into the studio too, and they were so excited about being on Radio 1 and John Peel that they sort of just grabbed Mike's dance and stuff and started joining in too. He would tell these tales, and we'd all, of course, be tears rolling down our face, and of course, the tears rolling down our face today. So many bands as well. I mean, going back to the Smiths, but then more recently Coldplay, Keen, just say, yeah. always say they owe their career to John Peel. Yeah. Without him, they'd be nowhere. He was a, an extraordinary, powerful force for music. He seemed to collect around him people who really cared about music. And he would play a record or play a track and, you know, you'd never hear of it again, but you would love it for that moment. He'd often play it backwards without realising. He'd play it backwards or at the wrong speed, of course, which is one of the great quotes that everyone at Radio 1 has. Are you sure that's at the right speed, John? But it didn't matter. He was a great, and I feel bereft. And everyone at Radio 1 feels bereft that, you know, John's not here. He'll be incredibly missed here, won't he? Totally and completely irreplaceable. I don't know what we're going to do. In a minute, we'll be hearing from Jarvis Cocker. First, though, Newsbeat's Heather Alexander looks back at John Peel's life. John was born in 1939 in Heswell near Chester. Before getting into radio, he did his military service, and it was in America he got his first job. Myself and all of my mates listened to a program called Cat's Caravan. I and mean, I'd got some records, which they didn't seem to have, and I went down and offered them, and they put me on the air. And I did that for a few weeks, then asked them to pay me, they told me to sod off. He did get more work, though, and stayed for three years, but he got homesick, and a job at Radio London followed. They thought his real name, John Ravenscroft, was too long and the secretary came up with John Peel. Then in 1967 when Radio 1 formed, John Peel was part of it. Greetings live forms, John Peel. They call me Dr. Excitement here. From the start, new bands sent records into his show, Top Gear. You know, the hopes of hundreds of people, well it's almost hundreds of people to pinned on each record. But there was always time for his other love, Liverpool Football Club. Well I guess it was back on top of the first division tonight and anyway into the programme. Four the decades and later and there have been a few rows with Radio 1 man Management and with pop DJs like Tony Blackburn and Noel Edmonds, but you can't argue with his record. John's played such varied music, from 70s punk bands like the Sex Pistols to the Smiths, Orbital, Pulp and the White Stripes, and the tracks keep coming in. If I could clone myself for this purpose alone, uh, I would do so and send four or five of me off to spend their lives listening to demo tapes. Recently he's lived in Suffolk with his wife. They have four children and lots of pets. John's won dozens of awards for all this. In 1998, he got an OBE. Then in 2002, this Sony Award. They're the Radio Oscars. John Peel. Um, I am, alas, uh, a celebrated crier. I cry terribly easily. And uh, obviously, I'm, I'm frankly very pissed as well, I have to be honest. Well, as Heather just said, countless bands and artists say they'd be nowhere without John's help and support. Here's just a taster of the music he helped bring to a wider audience. We can hear from Jarvis Cocker now. He told me if it wasn't for John, he would never have even started Pulp. He remembers when he first heard him as a teenager. The local radio station in Sheffield, where I'm from, wouldn't play punk rock when it first came out. And uh, one night I was just kind of 
tune in the radio and, and, and came across, I think it was an Elvis Costello song, and then I heard his voice, the voice afterwards. That was it. I just was listening to his show probably pretty religiously almost every night for about the next uh, three or four years, I think. And you met him a few times. What kind of man was he? He was good because, he, you know, although he was this kind of... Uh, legendary figure who had uh, done all this amazing stuff you wouldn't have guessed it quite shy he wasn't showy at all and if you ever wanted to say you know ah oh, what was that record you played in 1978 probably about quarter past ten at night he could probably tell you you know it's very rare that you can say about someone that the world would have been a different place without them but i think you can safely say it with him well, there's been the most incredible response from you today. Thousands of you have got in touch with your memories of John Peel. This is Lee from Ken. John Peel has been an inspiration for so many rock fans, hip-hop fans, any music you can think of. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't be married due to the music he played. He got us back together. My name's Lulu and I'm at university in Coventry and John Peel just meant so much to me. He'd play some ska track followed by hip-hop by drum and bass, play completely the wrong song the next time and was always apologising. I just thought he was fantastically human and an amazing man. This is Aaron Essex. John was special to me. It got me for a lot of long nights on call. It was like a ray of light in a sea of poor commercial music. He'll be sorely missed. Mark, talking from Bournemouth. So he was an absolute institution and brightened up otherwise dull evenings at work. Smith from Stockport. I'm yeah, really upset to hear about John Peel. He provided the soundtrack to my teenage years, you know, when it was lights out and you had the radio on underneath your pillow. <laughs> Well, there's a message board up and running on Radio 1 online. You can leave your thoughts there. This is Newsbeat. You're listening to a special programme with Georgina Bowman and Briggy Smale looking back at the life of John Peel, who died last night. We've been inundated with calls from people who've been helped and influenced by John, particularly the bands he supported. Tim from Ash rang us earlier from Prague, where the bands are on tour sort of went a bit further than most relationships with most DJs. We actually went to his house, did a whole broadcast. It was just a really amazing night. You must have um, some very good memories of your time with him. Yeah, yeah. We did a session for him and we got uh, Damien O'Neill from the, the Undertones to play Teenage Kicks with us. Of course, John was in tears, you know, when we were doing it. It's a very emotional, like, warm person. What kind of influence do you think he had on your career? Well, he was really supportive of us and, you know, he always is with, like, upcoming new talents. He's always supporting it right from the beginning. You know, it's followed us right for our whole career. You know, we're eternally grateful. And this show is... It's such a big influence. It's like, you know, been my favourite radio show of all time. You always hear the maddest music on it. It'll be sorely missed. Radio 1. Well, let's have a look, quick look at some of the other stories we're following today. And a young mother has told Winchester Crown Court that two police officers raped her in her home while her children slept upstairs. The woman, who'd been drunk at the time, said she'd been attacked outside a club and the officers had taken her home. PCs Mark Witcher and Andrew Lang of Surrey Police deny 10 charges of rape, indecent assault and misconduct. An official investigation into a plane crash in New York three years ago, which killed two 265 people has blamed pilot error. The American Airlines flight came down shortly after takeoff from Kennedy Airport. Initially, there were fears it was a terrorist attack because it was just two months after September the 11th. Offenders aged between 8 and 13 could be sent to army-style camps under new plans drawn up by the Youth Justice Board and the Ministry of Defence. Convicted young offenders and disruptive children who are considered likely to commit crimes will take part in trials at three camps in England. And the House of Lords is voting at the moment on hunting with dogs. Many of them want a system of licences to allow some hunts in England and Wales, but that idea has already been rejected by MPs. Newsbeat. David Garrido's got tonight's sports. Manchester United striker Ruud van Nistelrooy has pleaded guilty to the FA's charge of serious foul play. It's after his challenge on Ashley Cole in Sunday's 2-0 win against Arsenal. Manchester City manager Kevin Keegan says he'll write a letter of apology to referee Steve Dunn after being charged with using abusive and insulting language. Boss Gary Megson is parting company with West Brom with immediate effect. It was thought he'd leave next summer. And seven matches in the Carling Cup third round tonight. Manchester United travel to Crewe. Liverpool meet Millwall at the New Den. Aston Villa go to Burnley and Portsmouth host Leeds at Fratton Park. Newsbeat. Tonight's Newsbeat is all about John Peel who died aged 65. At 11pm Steve Lamatt will play some of John's favourite music and share some stories stories from his extraordinary career. Jo Wiley was one of the first people to learn of John's death. She worked with John on many occasions and told me he's simply irreplaceable. John was simply one of my favourite men in the whole world. 
as a music fan and a broadcaster, he was absolute inspiration. Um, and he was just simply the Don. Everybody here at Radio 1 will testify to that. Anyone that's ever met him or worked in music, he was just the one that you looked up to and uh, you respected. I've got so many great memories of him, though, especially from the Glastonbury TV show that we did together. You know, Glastonbury is never going to be the same again for me. I spent so many special moments sitting around a campfire with John, him grumbling about some band that's on the main stage that he absolutely loathed and me defending them. We'll straighten out some more memories of John Peel. Here's Griff from the Super Furry Animals. I've got a twisting. So his program had a unique sort of <laughs> musical outlook. I think he was very wary of, of trends in the middle of a, a conservative movement like Britpop. He was introducing people to drum and bass. Orbital played their last ever gig in a session for John in June this year. Paul Hartnell called to tell us what he meant to him. We talked to most musicians in the UK. They all grew up being influenced by John Peel because he was the man that showed you what was out there, you know. There's no one else like him, really. He was the only one. Funny thing is, if you ever met John Peel, you'd love him for just being this big, warm, enthusiastic, friendly man. But without even meeting him, I think that comes across on the radio. And here's Guy from Elbow. John started the ball rolling when he when he played Powder Blue in 1997. Um, it was a good few years until he came out commercially, but if he hadn't have played that record, we certainly wouldn't be where we are now. We owe everything to him. Some more of your memories now. Yeah, Calvin says, Radio 1, don't be sad. Think of it this way. At least when we all rejoin him, there's going to be some great music up there. Rest in peace. Lucy on the Wirral says, John was like a father to all of us. He's a legend and will always be remembered. Briggy, you've got some more. Yeah, John's texted. He says, not only will we miss a genius, but also a brilliant sense of humour. Rest in peace. Andy in Leeds says, I've lost a good friend. He will always be with us. And one from Jamie who just says... Top life, top music, top man. This is Radio 1. We can hear from Damon Olbarn now. He told me he was one of many people hugely influenced by John Peel. I've always been a massive fan of John Peel, I think. I was of that generation that put their little transistor radios under their duvets and listened to him late at night. He was always sanity when the other areas of entertainment seemed to be losing the plot in any perspective. He had the spirit of music in him. He really lived by that credo. Have you got any particular memories of John Peel that you can share with us? It was many years before I kind of felt that John was kind of, was got into us and really genuinely lovely and it's really sad. So many of the bands we've been talking to today, Damon, are just saying basically, you know, if it hadn't been for John Peel and his Radio 1 show, they really don't think they'd be where they are now. No, I think that's absolutely true. I think, I think for everyone, being recognised by John Peel was, was a major, major sort of turning point in your career, you know. I was supposed to go over to his house and play some music a few weeks ago and I sort of said, could I delay it? I feel like that was a really stupid thing to do. I think the BBC has lost a, a, a very, very good soul. You've been listening to a Newsbeat special tribute to John Peel, Radio 1's longest-serving DJ, who's died age 65. He had a heart attack while on holiday in Peru with his wife, Sheila. Brig, what are your favourite memories of him? Well, as well as uh, being totally in awe of him, he had a really dry sense of humour, fabulous anecdotes. I usually got to hear them on the Thursday night before Glastonbury. Joe Wiley and I would start especially to drink with John. He'd always have red wine. And he'd regale us with his stories. And he's really shy, but he was one of the funniest men I Met. Yeah, I remember um, getting a very, very late night and slightly worse for wear lift home from Glastonbury two years ago with John and his producer. Must say, maddest music I have ever heard on the radio. And I left my mobile in his car and I've still never got it back. And also, I can still see him walking down the street where Radio 1 is, head down, but he always looked up, smiled and said hello very politely. Thank you very much. Start the same music, lads. This morning we have the incredible string band and poet Adrian Mitchell. We'll also play records by groups that you may not have heard of that we consider worthy of exposure. Anyway, the incredible string band now, and this is called You Get Brighter Every Day. John was simply one of my favourite men in the whole world. As a music fan and a broadcaster, he was absolute inspiration. It's simply, it's the biggest and saddest loss to everybody. Greetings, life forms. John Peel. They call me Dr. Excitement here at Radio 1 FM. John Peel. Well, this is profoundly embarrassing. I was so busy listening to that, I forgot to queue up another record. Well, people do that, and I get away with it, and uh, I'm going to as well in just a second if I put on the right side of the next record, which I don't think I have done. Presenters, whether you meet them or not, and especially John, over such a long period of time, would have touched so many people. Lee and Kent said if it wasn't for John, he wouldn't be married, so God blessed him. I wanna hold her, wanna hold her tight. Get teenage kicks right through. 
you need to have a fairly obsessive nature, really, to do the programmes that I do in the way that they're done. And I even type my own running orders and things, because that way I can be sure they're correct. These are the psychedelic furs, finally, in sister Europe. Not been queued up, but if I keep talking long enough, it'll start. Thank you. Although it's going to start at the wrong speed. Nice try. I mean, I love doing what I do, you know, and I've never had any ambitions to do anything else since I was about 28, so I'm very lucky in that. I always say to people, and people think, oh, isn't he modest, isn't that charming? I always say to people, oh, well, you know, but you don't get noticed because I look like a minicab driver. The last time I saw John, you know, just before he went off on holiday, we had one of our DJ dinners, and there he was um, at 10.30, 11 o'clock at night with a glass of red wine in one hand. Um, at the centre of the conversation, he would tell these tales, and we'd all, of course, be tears rolling down our face. And, of course, the tears rolling down our face today. I know, I'm fabulously lucky. I mean, I do know that. Everything that I wanted when I was a kid, you know, a house in the country, dogs, cats, an astounding wife, really nice children, and a job on the radio playing records that I like and getting lots and lots of free records. It's, it's difficult to think what could be added to this to improve it. This is Radio 1.